College baseball is back. We're out here at Alex Box Stadium, Skip Bertman Field, the most historic venue in all of NCAA baseball. I'm Max Hawkins. This is Will Eunice. Well, it's official. Greg Dykeman, he's going to play tonight. We didn't know his status. We'll have more on that when we come back. We'll also discuss LSU's pitching rotation, the third starter, and we'll also have KLSU's uh, Mario Rez with us today. Mario Rez will be with us. We're coming back in just one second. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Tiger TV Game Day Show. We're live here at Alex Box Stadium, Skip Birdman Field. I'm Max Hawkins. With me, Will Eunice. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. I'm excited for LSU baseball. The fans are excited about LSU baseball. They've been waiting for this since football season, some of them since the middle of football season. You, I mean, uh, I mean, it's a winning atmosphere. It's a winning tradition here. It's a championship tradition here. And, of course, baseball at the box, nothing better than that. I think people are ready for some baseball after we've had uh, this basketball team, how they've been performing lately. Mm -hmm. Well, you see it behind me right here. The tarp is out on the field. It started raining here at Alex Box Stadium really about 10 minutes ago. They brought the tarp out. See the water hitting the tarp out there. We don't have any word yet on postponement. The game is supposed to start at 7 p.m. tonight. Um, as we speak, it's 5.20, 5.15 right now. So we'll update you as that goes along. Any word we get on that, we'll break it here on the Tiger TV tailgate show. But, yes, the tarp is out. It is raining here in Baton Rouge. So we'll update you on, we'll update you on that as we go. Now, breaking news as of yesterday was that LSU outfielder Greg Dykeman will play tonight. Will, any comment on that? A big bat for LSU. Really important that he's in the lineup this evening. Accounted for... 11 home runs last season. That's just above 24% of LSU's team total on home runs. He also uh, he also is just a, a big uh, a big glove in the field as well. He's gonna be playing left field most of this season. Suffering that uh, actually cheek moan. A fastball hit him in the cheek moan at practice last last Friday. In fact, so a, a week out, he's already gonna play tonight. Here's Coach Paul Maneri on Greg Dykeman. He drove to Lafayette this morning with his helmet with his new face mask that was custom made built for him uh, the doctor gave him 100 percent clearance and uh, he actually practiced yesterday but all he did was face batting practice pitching uh, and off the machine a, a, you know coach pitching as well as off the pitching machine today after our regular practice we're going to have a little bit of a simulated game and Greg's going to face a couple of our regular pitchers. Does it hurt? Yeah, no, I'm good. I feel great. No, no, no pain. You know, that's that was the biggest thing. That's the reason why I came back to this year. This year is, you know, to start opening night to get the season off on the right foot and make a trip to Omaha. This is going to take a lot more than this. He can help a lot. So Dykeman will be in outfield for the Tigers tonight. Will is a big bat. Yeah, definitely a big bat. Excuse me. He was going to play. He's going to play right field for the Tigers, not left field. And yeah, definitely he. Is a big part of this offense. Lines up in the four hole, in the uh, in the batting order. So a big miss if he goes out. But luckily for the Tigers, he's in. And now that some LSU power has been restored with Greg Dyton back in the lineup. Uh, however, there are two other potential sources of power that are going to be out of tonight's lineup. Yeah, you, uh, Bryce, Bryce Jordan, who was a DH, big uh, big bat in the lineup. Is he's hurt? He got a torn ACL. Jordan Romero also DH last year hit a. Hit a I'm, 11 home runs last year, something like that? I think he hit nine home runs last year and uh, co together combined for 14 home runs on the season. And uh, uh, unfortunately, Bryce Jordan tore his ACL. And um, a senior catcher, Jordan Romero, also, as you said, will be out. And uh, that's due to a sprained ankle he suffered during base running drills. And uh, he, hasn't protected, he hasn't participated in any catching uh, practice of any kind. And uh, they both accounted for. Uh, a great batting average uh, of uh, 290 and hit 14 home runs together. And uh, the duo combined for 
74 RBIs last year, so that's two big bats that are going to be out this evening. Yeah, so it's really important that they're getting Greg Dykeman back in this lineup tonight because he's going to be hitting the cleanup spot. So they definitely have one big bat. They're going to be missing two others. So some of these other guys, Kramer Robertson, Cole Freeman, Antoine Duplantis, all those guys have to step it up a little bit until, uh, well, at least Romero gets back into the game up. Uh, Obviously, Bryce Jordan will be out for the season with that torn ACL. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think another player we'll be able to see is Bryce Adams. He kind of uh, came into the fray last year, didn't, didn't uh, experience so much success with the Tigers last season. But he had a, a good set of summer uh, – he had a good fall and summer ball, and he's back, and Paul Maneri really wants him to step into that – Role now that Bryce Jordan is out, so hopefully we'll see the shades of what we saw at the beginning of last season, the the potential we know Bryce Adams has into that DH spot. When we come back, we'll take a look at two LSU pitchers. They're big name players over here: Alex Lang, Jared Poche. Don't go anywhere. LSU senior Jared Poche had the chance to sign professionally last season. He was drafted, but he decided to return. Now he and junior Alex Lang will make up one of the most dominant pitching forces in all of college baseball. Alex Lang and Jared Poche will continue for one more year under the lights in Alec Box Stadium. I was in Japan at the time and I saw it and I, I, was, I just started smiling and, and laughing. My roommate looked over and he's like, what are you laughing at, dude? And I was like, man, Jared's coming back. And he, was, he just rolled his eyes like, oh, no, really? But so I, I'm so pumped. I mean, that, that's one of my best friends in the whole wide world, man. He's he's an incredible talent. We've been really good friends since we were 15, 16, 17. And, you know, I'm just excited to have another year. And just having him back is, is a lot of fun, you know, on and off the field. You know, it's not just playing with him, but it's good to be a hangout with him and try to understand what he's talking about sometimes. And it's, 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 just, it's something I'll cherish forever. You know, he's a really good friend of mine. I'm excited that he's back. Since they've been playing together for so long, they have a very good chemistry together. I think we're probably two of the closest pitchers in the country. You know, we've we pitched behind each other now for three years, and we've been going back in high school, we did the same thing. So just having that and just feeding off each other, it's been a lot of Alex Lang will be the starting pitcher today against Air Force, and tomorrow Jared Poche will be the starting pitcher against Army. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Kristen Payne. Alex Lang and Jared Poche. Well, it's tough to find a better combination than those guys in college baseball. Oh, it's going to be tough to it's tough to find a duo that can match their skills. I mean, last year you have you have uh, Jared Poche is going nine and four, three point three five ERA uh, on a hundred and two on hundred two innings, only thirty seven walks, and uh, and uh, of course uh, he's eleven wins away from that vital uh, thirty eight win mark, which would tie Scott Schultz who played for LSU in 1992 to 1995 for the uh, most career victories in LSU history. So that would be very interesting if we got that to that. That is going to be a big story this year. We'll keep updated on that. Jared Poche only needs 11 wins to become the winningest all-time pitcher here at LSU. Uh, now, what about Alex Lang? Well, he's a guy who's got a lot of hype around him. They're saying he could be the best pitcher that goes to the MLB this year in the draft. So give me his take. I mean – Look, you look at Alex Lang. It's his third year here at LSU. Not many people expect him to stay for his fourth. So he's really going to have to make this one count for the scouts that are looking at him. He's going to have to throw some really good stuff. Last year, he was 8-4 and four and had a 3.79 ERA. And, uh, he a little bit of a drop-off last year. He was undefeated his freshman year. Right. Came in really hot. So going to have to get that back. So Lang and Poche will be a solid one-two punch. But the question going into the week was, who would be the Tigers' third starter on Sunday? That role really isn't solidified yet. Yesterday, though, Coach Paul Maneri said it came down to freshmen Eric Walker and Zach Hess. I would say Poche and Walker will be somewhere in the 80 to 85 range maximum. So that, that could be five innings, it could be six, seven, who knows. I, the reason Hess is going to throw one inning, probably Sunday, I'm guessing, I just want to kind of break the ice with him and get him his first outing. Because he's going to throw an inning, I just want to give him enough rest to get ready for a start. And part of it, too, is I want his first start to be at home as well. So we're going to change him to Wednesday against Hofstra. And most so, well, both guys are going to get the start, but Walker will get the start Sunday. Hess going to be next Wednesday, midweek game. Yeah, we're looking at Eric Walker, definitely the Sunday game. And uh, Coach Paul Maneri said that there will be an inning Sunday for Zach Hess to get to uh, – 
to kind of break the ice. Yeah, get his feet wet and, you know, just get into momentum with it. I mean, these are both stellar freshmen. I mean, they're coming out high school. I mean, you look at Zach Hess, .6 ERA, 7-1 um, and one in, his, uh, in his senior season, two-time first-team all-state selection in West Virginia. And then you look at Eric Walker, and he has a complete record in high school of uh, 27 and 5. And, a, um, and uh, in his junior season, he went 14 and 0, and also was under 1 ERA last season with a 1.2 ERA, went 7 and 3 in his senior season. So, two really, really, um, really exciting guys for the LSU pitching rotation. And uh, uh, Coach Maneri said that he's going to let Walker go around 80 pitches on, on Sunday. And, uh, and said, yeah, it's a. Third star battle should be interesting. Won't be determined until about three weeks into the season. Yeah. Good trial run for these guys this week. When we come back, KLSU Sports Director Mario Jerez will join us here. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Tiger TV Game Day Show. We're here with KLSU Sports Director Mario Jerez. Mario, how you doing today, man? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me on, Max. No problem, man. We always love it when you got on. Uh, Mario, in case you guys didn't know, is the Spanish play-by-play -play guy during the LSU football season for the home games. Mario, just tell us a little bit about that, get our viewers in on it. Well, um, I've been doing that for five years. I do the play-by-play -play in Spanish for stations in New Orleans and Baton Rouge. Like I said, uh, I just completed my fifth season, and uh, for a lifelong LSU fan, it is the, a dream come true. I, I love being able to do it. I love having the privilege of being in the price box at Tiger Stadium. However, um, I think I should say that I don't want that to be my peak. I kind of I want that to be my launching point um, as, as a broadcaster. Yeah. Uh, you actually called today's game right before this, which was Air Force and Army. How did that go? Uh, great game. Before anything, I want to give a big thank you to LSU Sports Properties and Chris Blair for giving the opportunity to do that. We actually did it from this booth, and uh, it was a great game. It was a great game. Air Force ended up getting the win 8-7, to seven. very entertaining. They had four lead changes throughout the game, and uh, we got a lot of positive feedback on social media. The majority of our listeners were listening to KLSU's stream, um, and it was mostly Air Force fans and Army fans, and we had a lot of cool interaction with them. And Also, it was really cool just to be able to provide a free broadcast for the service academies. You know, They usually don't get much exposure for sports like baseball and for them to, to take the trip to come here to Alex Box, like you said, one of the premier destinations in college baseball. It's really cool, cool to be able to help them with that. I could tell their fans enjoyed it, and uh, me and Nick really enjoyed bringing the broadcast to them. Shout out to all the armed forces here in America, U.S. of uh, A. So with that being said, you've seen Air Force play tonight. I mean, you've seen them play already today. How do you think they match up against LSU? Well, they could hit. I'll tell you that much. You guys were talking about Alex Lang, and yes, he is one of the premier pitchers in the country, but there's an Air Force team that was actually third in the nation in team batting average last year, and it showed today eight runs. I forgot how many hits they had, but uh, they rallied. They were up at first, uh, built run support, then they were trailing, and they still had uh, the batting power to come back and made the comeback and get the win. So uh, Air Force, a really good hitting team. They're pitching not as strong, but Alex Lang, definitely a, a good first test here on opening night. Well, you make a good point because last year in the Super Regional, Coastal Carolina, the eventual College World Series champion, they kind of gave LSU all they wanted at the plate. I mean, they were smacking that ball and Poche and Lang, and as good as those guys are, you know, they gave up enough runs where they had to lose the game. So that's, that's a good point you bring up. Uh, Mario, man, just what's your outlook for this baseball team for the entire season? I mean, it's, it's a lot of expectations, Poche, Lang both coming back, and then – they only really lost Jake Fraley last year. So what you see happening for the season? Yeah, um, we've been talking about this on my show a lot. Um, it's pretty much Omaha bust. I think anything less than a trip to the College World Series would – uh, would be a disappointment for this team. I'm sure they could still have a great season and not go to Omaha. But, you know, that's the goal. Last year it was everybody's young. You had nine new everyday players. Now you have everybody coming back. You have two of the best pitchers in the country. LSU, this team has been compared to some of the great teams, the, the teams that had Bregman a few years ago. And, uh, you know, they want to get it done. It's been since 2009 that LSU has won a championship, and I think that is the goal. We talked to uh, LSU legend, former baseball coach, won five national champions here, Skip Bertman. He said, he said it best, the trick for – LSU and Palmineri is not getting to Omaha, but it's getting there and winning in Omaha. Exactly. you got to get that ring. Like I said, it's been since 2009. Um, LSU got it done, and they've been to Omaha since then. But really since they opened the new park, since they stopped playing in Rosenblatt Stadium over there in Omaha, LSU hasn't had that type of success. We know what type of regular season they could put together. There's the number three team in the country coming into the season. The question is finishing. Can you win in Omaha? The, qu the questions aren't, oh, is LSU good enough? They have the talent. That's why we're talking about really specific things. Who's going to be the third pitcher? Who's going to uh, – be the DH when Dykeman is out. Little things is going to be what makes a difference because the goal is going to be to win the title. 
Mario, thank you for join, joining us, man. When we come back, we'll wrap up here in the Tiger TV Game Day show from Alex Box Stadium, Skip Bergman Field. Earlier this month, Tiger TV met with former LSU baseball coach Skip Bertman, and with the season fast approaching us and the season starting tonight, or may start tonight, we don't know, we caught up with Skip and saw and asked him what his outlook for the season was for the LSU Tiger team. This year, uh, he has something going for him that you don't often get. Uh, the players get drafted when they're juniors or age 21, and you generally lose them all. But this year, four of the draft picks didn't take the money. So uh, Robertson at short, or Dykeman in right field, and of course uh, Jared Poche definitely pitching Friday or Saturday, and uh, Cole Freeman at the second base. Uh, these are really excellent athletes. Uh, Paul is going to win. He'll win a large number of games, you know, maybe even 50, you know, 48. But the question is, when you get down to that single unforgiving game, that's uh, only 27 outs, the last game of a tournament, is somebody going to get a hit? Or is it going to roll through or will it? loop over or will somebody smash it over the fence but in terms of putting the first nine uh, out there Paul's going to have a wonderful season I think the fans are going to be very very happy so Skip Bertman believes 50 wins for the Tigers this season or thereabout and a trip to Omaha and I think that's spot on with what I believe there Max I think they're going to get around 50 wins and they will make an appearance in Omaha yeah you know I'm confident saying that we'll have to see you know it I thought the same thing last year, then they get to the Super Regionals and they just hit Coastal Carolina, gave them a heck of a game, but, you know, Coastal went on to win the national championship, so you're going to have stuff like that. The, really, it's getting your pitching and staying healthy for the remainder of their season. We know they've had some bumps with injuries thus far, so they really can't afford too many more of them, so it really is just, you know, steady pitching, keep these guys healthy, and then, of course, hit the ball, and that's that. We'll be looking at some freshmen to come into the fray. We have Josh Smith starting tonight, and also, um, of course, Jake Slaughter. So those are some uh, that's first and third base for them, respectively. And uh, so, yeah, those are some really exciting guys that Palmineer is going to look to step up this season in order to get to that 50 win mark and eventually to Omaha. Two freshmen were in the infield, right in the corners, first and third. But of course. In the middle right there, you got the veteran presence with Kramer Robertson and Cole Freeman. Uh, Kramer Robertson really picked up right where Alex Bregman left off in the field last season. And, of course, Cole Freeman stepping into his own, too. Both those guys were drafted, but, again, came back for their senior season. So, well, big expectations. Uh, I think these guys do live up to the, to the expectations this season. Again, just the question will be when you get to the playoffs, when you get to this regional, super regionals, and get to the College World Series, it'll be about winning for this team. As Coach Bertman said, who will get the hit? Will the ball roll through or will it bloop right over? You never know with those type of games, and uh, that's kind of the things that Coach Maneri, out, it's out of his control. But you know what? We'll hope the Tigers can get that luck this season and bring home a national championship for, for LSU. Well, it's still raining out here. We're fixing to sign off, but forecast says rain till midnight. Uh, there's no postponement on the game yet, though. We will let you know as soon as that happens. You can follow us on Twitter at TTV underscore sports. Check LSUnow.com later for more update on this. Will, ready for this game. I hope it gets played. Oh, me too, Max. I really hope that this game can be played because a bunch of buildup, first night at the box. Everyone's waiting for it. Hopefully we can play it. Thanks for joining us, everybody.